Diane Warren, you have composed a, a wonderful song for the documentary RBG called I'll Fight. Uh, it's performed by Jennifer Hudson. How did you come to be involved with this uh, amazing documentary? You know, um, Bonnie Greenberg, who I work on the hunting ground with, is who brought, brought me into this. Um, and I was so honored to to be a part of this, you know, and I mean, it's funny because last year when I when I was, did this thing, the same kind of talk, um, and I, the, the whole Oscar circuit kind of thing um, was stand up for something was for the movie about Thurgood Marshall, another Supreme Court judge. So I'm I'm like it's like another <laughs> now it's a living one now it's now it's one that has to live for you know another hundred years because she is not allowed to die. So you know it, it's just amazing to. <laughs> No, but like everybody was like on, online going, you can have our ribs, you can have our organs, you're just not allowed to die. This is not in the cards, no. Another hundred years at least. Um, and just as, as, I mean, you know, just to, to be a part of this is so cool and to, to have a song that can be her theme song because she's so, she's so powerful. You saw the documentary, right? Yes, yes. With her, like her, you know, her mom thought, taught her, you know, don't raise your voice, you know, but yet she, with her soft voice, she speaks so loudly, you know. And then, so it's kind of cool, like Gen Jennifer Hudson is like her avatar as a diva. <clears throat> that made sense. That made sense to me. No, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense that, you know, you know that she she uses the, the power of the law uh, yeah. to, in, in her descents, especially, uh, to, oh, to radiate that. And logic and like, you know, and what's right. You know, her, her moral compass is what's is what's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so were there any, before this uh, documentary, uh, or before you became involved with this, uh, were you uh, very aware of uh, uh, Justice Ginsburg's career? Yeah. Um, I, I was very aware of her. I, I wasn't aware of everything about her, but I was definitely aware of her. You know, I wasn't aware of the love story between her and, and Marty, her husband. That, that I wasn't aware of. That was, by the way, I think that's why that documentary is done part of why it's doing so well because it's a beautiful love story there too. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I, I that 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 part where she reads the last letter that he wrote her. Oh, oh my God, God, I was the best. Did you like that? Like because she's so, you know, she's so strong, and she and here she is when she reads that last line, she like loses it. You just hear it in her voice. I went to the Skirball a couple weeks ago. If, if you're, are you in LA? No, I'm in. I'm outside of DC. <laughs> Oh, if you get to, I don't know how long the the, the um, exhibit on Ruth Bader Ginsburg is at the square ball out here. If you if you're out here before it ends, you I, I highly recommend it. I mean, and they have a copy of that letter there. Oh the wow! Letter. And I read it. You know, it's just it's heartbreaking. Oh uh, yeah, it's just, but it's also so heartwarming as well because yeah. it's like the the relationship that they shared together. Yeah, right. And in and in, in that time. You know, men didn't support women. Like they don't even do it now. But but in the fifties, that that he like he you see the look in his eyes when he's looking at her when she's getting sworn in, and, and you just it's just love. It's pure love, and it's it's mutual. But it, it's a beautiful thing to see. You know, and I think I, I honestly think that's kind of what's connected people. You know, to to that movie as well because it's and it's it's uplifting. You know, you see she's five feet tall and she's changing the world. <laughs> It really, it really is. And one thing that I've always been curious about um, uh, when it comes to writing songs, specifically for for films, is um, do you know who you're going to be writing the song for before you start writing it, or is that something that's determined afterwards? Uh, it's usually determined afterwards. You know, there's one time back in the day where I knew someone. I knew like when I did the song for Up Close and Personal years ago. Probably Celine was going to be the artist doing that song. Um, but usually I kind of figure it out after, just like when I write a song, you know, for anything, you know, I'm just writing it and whoever feels right for it. But, but this, this felt like a diva needed to do it, you know? So, and, and then usually a lot of times I think of casting, it's interesting, this, this goes almost against it, but I usually think of casting a, a, a whoever sings the song as a character, could have been a character in the movie. You know, Andrew mm -hmm. Dan, uh, in, in Stan, in, um, in Marshall was literally in the movie, by the way, I didn't even know she was in it. I only read the script. So when I saw the movie, the artist I, I was getting to do the song was in the movie. You could have seen Andra, obviously, in the movie. Could have been, you know, or, or Common could have been in that movie. Or Gaga could have been in, you know, Hunting Ground. She could have been one of those girls. Or, you know, any of these people that do my songs. This is an, almost a different kind of thing where, you know, Jennifer Hudson and Ruth Bader Ginsburg have nothing in common, but she's her avatar. 
Like if, if Ruth <laughs> Ginsburg was a was a diva, it would it would be would either be a big opera singer or it would be Jennifer Hudson. Well, she does have. Uh, if you remember from the scenes with her workout, she does have that shirt that says "Super Diva" on it. Oh my God, I know, right? Do you see what she does? How she works out? Do you see? Yeah, that, that was. I, it's ridiculous, and that shirt was actually given to her by the Washington Opera Society. Oh, it was. I yes. Like, yeah. I have these shirts made um, that say "I'll fight" and, and it has um, you know, Troy's RBG on it. I'm trying to get get one to her because I wanted to wear. And I want to take a picture with her, holding those things with the weights. <laughs> she's. She's an amazing, like, she's an amazing human being. You know, look at what she's, look what she's been, look what she, I mean, she's 85 years old and she does that workout. Mm -hmm. Two bouts of cancer. You don't usually live with pancreatic cancer. One of my best friends passed away from that. Like, cause she beats all of it, you know? And uh, what's her, what are a few ribs, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's quite something. It's quite something what she's been able to accomplish and still accomplish. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's more, and that's the thing, the cool thing is, is I think that's why this movie is so powerful too, and I hopefully the song as well. It's, we need to fight, we need some, to know someone's fighting for us in, in these crazy times we're living in, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, um, uh, so you, of course, you've written the songs for a lot of, you've written songs for a lot of movies. Um, recently you have done songs for documentaries. Yeah. I was wondering, is there any sort of, is there any, more is there anything that's more difficult to writing a song about a documentary as opposed to a narrative feature no no it's, it's all the same you know um you know, it's just getting inspired you know but I, I i write songs for like i did a song in star is born you know this year i've lost I've written something in creed too actually so I, i'm doing songs a lot of different things so it's not just documentaries but but i love a great documentary you know and, and, and this is such an inspiring one you know? um so the, the song i have in star is born is the notorious butt song why did you do that one which is on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> which I love that song. That's a fantastic song. Thank you. I think it's a really good song. People were going like, is that supposed to be a bad song? I go, no, we sat down and tried to write a really fun pop song, you know? I don't think Bradley Cooper's character liked it very much, you know? No, and that's what I got for it. It was, it was supposed to be a fun song. Yeah. There's so nothing wrong with fun songs. Yeah, there's room for everything, man. You know, you could you could have a song that, that make, inspires you to change the world, and you could have a song about butts. Why not? Exactly. Exactly. Not every song has to be blown in the wind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It keeps it interesting as a songwriter. And, and uh, is there any, um, uh, you also collaborated with a lot of people. I'm wondering if there's any sort of collaboration that you were particularly uh, proud of and possibly hoping to do again for, well, I mean, for any type of song. I mean, I usually write by myself, to be honest. You know, most of the time, my songs are written solely by me. Um, so, you know, I would collaborate on with certain situations. Yeah. Yeah. And so, <laughs> um, I was wondering if there was one particular song in your catalog that you feel especially proud of, because I mean, it's a long, long, amazing catalog to look at. Um, yeah. I'm proud of, I'm proud of this one. I'm proud of I'll Fight. I'm really proud. I'm, I'm proud of the last three movie songs I've done. I'll tell you that. But because I think they, they delve deeper, you know. Um, I think Till It Happens to You um, and Stand Up for Something and I'll Fight. To me, they're like a trilogy of, of, of songs, like starting out with Till It Happens to You. You're talking about what happened to Stand Up for Something. You're starting to stand up and then I'll fight. I'll fight and I'll fight for you as well. So it's not just about me. Um, so those songs, there's also a song that I wrote for Beyonce um, five years ago. I, I lose track of time called I Was Here. I'm really mm -hmm. proud of that song. Um, I mean, I'm proud of a lot of my a lot of my songs. I'm I'm proud of songs you haven't heard of yet. They are some of my best songs. But hopefully, I'll get to hear some. So, um, you, uh, how far did, how far in advance before a film is released do you usually are are you commissioned uh, to write a song for a movie? I mean, it's always it's always something different, you know. Could, you know, but it's just I mean, it, it just depends on what it is. Someone, someone just tell you an idea or something, or or you read a script and or you see the movie. But the the thing is. What's the most important thing is to be inspired, you know, whatever, whatever inspires you, you know what I mean? Like whatever gets that, that idea going. And then and you gotta like, the thing with, with movies, you have to, there's a lot of, a lot of opinions. That's the difference of, you know, just writing a song, like what I usually do when I'm doing something for a movie. It's like a lot of, a lot of opinions. Sometimes people want changes, sometimes people, you know, so you, you have to realize it's not, because when I'm doing a song for a movie, it's, it's, 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Make it. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that last part there. I'm saying because when I, when I do a song for a movie, it's it's more about how that song is going to fit in a movie. So it's it's when I'm writing a song by my you know for my own thing, it's whatever I want it to be. But when you write a song for a movie, there's a lot of different opinions and stuff like that. You know that that that's kind of what the hard part. I might have digressed a little bit, but that's that's sometimes um yeah. Okay. You know? Is there is there a particular artist? that you would love to write a song for that you haven't gotten the chance to yet? You know, please ask me that. There's not one person that I, that I really want to um, do that with, but I hear people all the time, like, you know, that I think, oh, I have a great song for them. I'd love to work with them, um, you know, or, you know, like I worked with Adele a few years ago and stuff, but, um, and there was a song of mine that she really loved and she actually demoed it. I knew she wasn't going to record it, but I would love her to release that song, but <laughs> Is there, is there a particular genre that you would uh, hope to write for? No, I mean, I kind of write in all genres. Like this year, I mean, I'll tell you, okay, I'm going to give you an example of people who have done my songs this year. Really? Mm -hmm. did a song from, did a song for, for um, the last movie star, which was a beautiful movie. Like, having a song on Burt Reynolds' last movie. But, you know, Willie Nelson did my song. Like, beautiful. But, I mean, so Willie Nelson disturbed it, did a song, you know, to Jennifer Hudson, you know, to, you know, Stars Born, you know, to, you know, to LMA and Creed, who's a you know, really great upcoming one, a female urban artist. So I'm kind of all like, so genre wise, that was, I gave you rock, country, um, urban, and pop, and Jennifer. Pop. Yeah, and, and, and just getting back to like some of the um, uh, 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 other songs that you've done for films, I, I always think of, I think probably, uh, a lot of my friends, their favorite one is I Don't Want to Miss a Thing uh, from Armageddon. I mean, yeah. it, it, when you wrote that, were you just, were, did you did you think that Aer that Aerosmith might do the song? Or thought, was that just like a pipe dream? That was something I, I never in a million years thought Aerosmith would do that song. Because when I wrote it, I was thinking like more of a, like a girl singer, like a Celine or something at the time. And Kathy Nelson, who was the head of music at Disney, you know, goes, no, I'm going to get Aerosmith to do that. I go, no, you're not. They're not going to, they've never done anybody's song before. That's that. I get lucky like that. Like people that don't do other people's songs will do a song of mine. You know, sometimes, well, a lot actually. But that, that time, you know, and, and Stephen's daughter was in the movie, Liv Tyler and her dad played by Bruce Willis end up dying. And so Stephen saw the movie, Stephen Tyler saw the movie and he was really emotionally, you know, moved by it. And, um, and Kathy Nelson played him the song and, agreed to do it so that was pretty cool I, I really honestly never thought that would happen and that's still it's to this day their biggest hit and they're still touring on that song and uh, another thing i was curious about is so I, I i asked the question about um if there are specific artists you would like to write for is there a specific is, are there any directors that you would like to write a song for one of their movies well i've i've been talking to steven spielberg for a long time and he said he you know, I go, come on, there's got to be something. So hopefully he'll find something. I'd, I'd love to do a song for one of his movies. That seems, that seems, it seems weird that that hasn't happened because it seems like something that should have happened by now. He doesn't, we always, whenever I run into him, I, we always talk about it. Um, his song, his movies are all score. It's all John Williams. You know, there's usually not a song, a contemporary song at the end of his movie. But I mean. But when there is, I hope. I could imagine, you know, some, I mean, some great, some great lyrics by you with amazing John Williams music. I think that could be amazing. That'd be cool. We'd collaborate on the music. That'd yeah, cool. and he's still, he's also somebody who's still, who's still going strong. Love that, right? He's like, what is he, eighty-seven years old? I think he's close. I think, yeah, he's he's uh, closing in on ninety. Wow, God bless him, right? He's still, <laughs> still kicking ass out there. I love Damn him. Damn right, he is. That's all I want to be doing. <laughs> so, uh, what else do you have? Um, I mean, you have. Um, uh, you said you have a song in uh, Creed 2 that's coming up. Are there any other uh, 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 upcoming songs in uh, motion pictures that you have coming up? Next year, there's a bunch of really cool things. I'm really excited about the um, about about the, the song in Creed 2. It's a really great song called um, Love Me Like That. And Ella May, who's definitely on, she's going to be a huge star. Um, she's, a new, she's a UK um, urban artist. Fantastic. And she does a song. I, just, I think it's going to be a career song for her. I'm really excited about that. And the next year, I've all, you know, I'm working with a lot of different people. And next year, I've, I've some really great movies and some surprises. And 
before staff starts sitting. I wanted to ask you, so you have been nominated uh, several times, been nominated nine times. Um, you know, you are just a fantastic songwriter, it, it just, just on its own. But yeah. at, at this point um, in your career, what would, if you were to uh, win an Oscar, which I know there are so many people rooting for that to happen. I mean, last year it was all about Roger Deakins. Um, <laughs> I, I, was, I was hoping that like, because I think it was like 12 times for him or something. Was it yeah, I think it was his 12th nomination. And then like, okay, like, you know, give it to me nine times. That's a lot too, you know. But uh, it'll it'll you know it'll happen. Maybe it'll be this. Maybe it'll be something else. You know, it's pretty cool. If I if I had to though, if I had a, the choice of having won an Oscar like long time ago, and never being nominated again, or being not nominated like nine times, and not having won yet, I I way choose having nine nominations because it's longevity. I'd rather have that. I'd rather like you're still in the game. You're still vibrant, you know, relevant. I'd rather have that. But that being said, I'd like to win one sometime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there's a lot of people uh, cheering that to happen. And I know that now that we got we got Roger, that for a lot of us Oscar nerds, now that we have Roger Deakins taken care of, we are all in on you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thanks so much for talking with us. We wish you all the best this award season. Thank you. Thank you. And great talking to you.